Hey YouTube, it's Alicia here. Hope everybody is having a great day. None other. I am coming to give y'all a little but a small elimination chamber um, roundup and my point of view and who I think is going to win the match. So we're going to start off and I'm going to have to talk about Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. This is going to be a astounding match. So if you're going to start off with the with a match, put a match in the middle of the show, this is the match to put in the middle of the show. Right here. This is the, going to be the match you need to see. Now, I will say, with, I think this is, will be a 50-50 match. 50% that Brock Lesnar might win and 50% that Bobby Lesnar might not win. But that's how I feel about it. Now, I'm going to say this. If Bobby wins, then Bobby should have often, Bobby probably put a, a clause in there saying if he won. And I'm just praying and hoping Bobby probably had the clause in there if he won. Brock Lesnar can't be seen in the WWE for a year. Now that would have been that would be a pretty cool deal to see if he had snuck that up in there and um, Brock Lesnar didn't know about it. So we're gonna have to see where that where that match goes because we got a lot to talk about. All right, so then that's where I think that now the opener. I'm going to say the uh, to open the show. I will have to say Edge, Edge and Beth Phoenix versus Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley. And what I would have did with this match, I would make yeah, this is a this is overdue, overcome. But I would make sure the other two members of Judgment Day of Damian Priest and. Of Damian Priest and um, Dominic Mysterio is putting in a shark cage and has a hoist up over the stage, not over the ring, over the stage. Why? To make sure they don't interfere in the match and stuff. But I never say never. But I'm hoping. That if Damian Priest is in the Elimination Chamber, he is most mostly focused on that and not on this match. And if um, Dominic Mysterio get involved, I wouldn't be too surprised to find like um, Edge and Beth have an unexpected ally to come and help. Unexpected ally. Let's just put it that way. But if I could say who would win, I would say, oh, I would say um, Beth Phoenix and Edge would probably win with 60%. Um, and I'll say um, Finn Balor and Rhea probably would win with 50%. Um, so it's like a 60, 50% with that one. All right, so let's get started. Let's talk about the men's US title elimination chamber. So Austin Theory will be putting his um, US title on the line. Y'all, please excuse the voice. Is putting his elimination chamber on the um, title. He's putting his US title on the line. So two will start the match. And then the other ones be put in. So in here we have Austin Theory defending his title in the Elimination Chamber. Um, we have Seth Rollins, Damian Praise, Bronston Reed, Johnny Gargano, and Montez Ford. Okay, now let me break this down. Um, let me start with 
Johnny Gar um, Bronston Reed. I say only with 20% Bronston Reed has a chance of winning. Now, why would I say that? Because I don't, I can't see him. I can't see WWE allowing him to win that. I'm sorry. Um, so like I said, with only 20% of chance of winning. Okay. Johnny Gargano. I want only see about, ooh, I'm going to say between 30, 40% chance of winning. All right. We have Damian Priest. I also will see him winning with only 20%. So I say only with 20%, he have a good chance of winning. Yes, he is a former U.S. champion, but I'll just say it's only a 20% chance I can see him winning. Now, I really feel like the two people I think we should be looking at tonight will be Seth Rollins and Montez Ford. I will see Seth Rollins with with um 50% um with a 50-60% chance of winning because I can see he has held this title um at least ooh, a couple times. So I can probably see him winning it. Now Montez Ford, I see him with a 60-80% chance of winning. The reason is, this is his first sing. If he comes in and win, and win this, this will be his first single one. Um, first single, excuse me, y'all. First single title belt he has held since to held him and my, him and Dawkins has held the tag team go. This will be his first. And so, when you are part of one of the hottest couples let's just say the hottest minority couples in the wwe wwe is going to want to put a title on you so i'm thinking because montez ford gets this opportunity but he got it on his own i think wwe is ready to put a title on montez forward so i would not be too surprised if montez ford is the one that comes out Winning this, but I'm gonna say your top two you might want to look at tonight when it comes to this match it will be Montez Ford and um Seth Rollins. But I a couple months back I foretold this. I think I foretold this a couple months back on my Twitter in a question and stuff. And I remember a lot of people said they I, I gave them a lot of things they wanted to see, and they said we want to see it. And so yeah, that's that. Okay. So let's go to the women's. We have, and all I have a lot, I'm going to be very vocal about it. So for the elimination, the women's elimination chamber, to me, I very felt like the way that it was done wasn't, um, did not benefit that women's division in general. It was, I can see a lot of politics went down doing this. And it was um, opportunities um, that could have been given to somebody else. Okay, so first we have the four women from the Royal Rumble that was automatically added. Okay, I understand that. That would be Liv Morgan, Asuka, Raquel Gonzalez, and Nikki Cross. All right. All right, Natty had to go up against Shotzi, Shayna Baszler, Delina Vega, and her. It was a four-way match to qualify. Natty, Natty ended up qualifying um, on her return back into uh, on Raw, on SmackDown. She is handed a qualifying match opportunity. So that's how Natty got in. Okay, same thing with Carmella. And she got in, she won, and she got in. I feel like her, her way coming back into the company and coming into a four-way match, WWE should have added one more person or two more people in this match, and that should have been um, one of those spots should have been for, um, no offense to anybody, Tamina Snuka and Dana Brooks, because you left two good powerhouses out in this match. But you put Raquel Gonzalez in the match. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you the people who I feel like y'all might want to look at in this match. So, with only 20%, I only think Nikki Cross has a 20% chance of winning. None other. 
Um, I also feel like Carmella only has a 30% chance, and let me say a 30% chance of winning. With the reason I give Nikki Cross a 20% chance and Carmella a 30% chance, to me, those are the weakest links of this match. Match. I'm sorry. They are the weakest links. Yeah, they have held with um gold, but is it right to have um people like this in there? They deserve to be in there, but um, just to me, like I said, Nikki with 20% chance of winning and Carmella with 30% chance of winning. Okay, so coming in after that would be Liv Morgan and Natty. Natty, I can see a... We're going to start with Natty. Natty... um. I, she's a veteran of, uh, of the sport, and she's pretty good. But I see a 30%, 40% chance of her winning. The only reason is we, you know, the last few months, she just came back. And what what do we want to see from a future champion? Yeah, she has had title belt opportunities, but she has had a, had a consistent title belt opportunities. She has every few years, I would say every few years she gets a title belt opportunity is this that case again yes this is what the case is again now Liv Morgan was so the reason I'm going to say give Liv Morgan that 30 40 um, the 30 40 percent chance of winning she was most talked about this past summer during this past summer and everything, and she was more hyped. And so that's why I give her that 30, 40% chance. Now, my top two. We got um Raquel Gonzalez and Oscar. I'm saying, I'm gonna, I'm saying it. It's gonna be between these two women right here. Who's gonna win to go and face um and face Bianca? Okay. Now I'm gonna put like this. I got to start with Raquel Gonzalez. With Raquel Gonzalez, I put a 50-60% chance of winning because she's pretty good. I It was one occasion I really felt like she could have won and she could have had already had the title on her, but they didn't do that. They didn't press that. They didn't go with the button, so they wanted to do it this way. So, like I'm saying, I, I give her a 50-60% chance of winning when it comes to Raquel Gonzalez. That's just it. Now, when it comes to Oscar, I give Oscar a 70-80% chance of winning. She, this is, she's no stranger to the Elimination Chamber. Do I feel like she might have an upper hand a little bit because she has been in this um, the person who's been in the Elimination Chamber the most has been Natty, but I really say that Oscar might be the one to win it. But um, these are some pretty um. So like I'm saying, when it comes to the ones that I feel like you should look at, be looking at, it would be Raquel Gonzalez, Oscar, Liv Morgan, and Natty. Those are my top four right there in this particular match that you need to be looking at. Overall, yeah. So now, yeah. So now we are going to talk about the undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn. <laughs> Y'all, when this was announced, I was like, really? Because <laughs> I got a lot to say. One, really, I wouldn't be just about somebody interfering. But I said we're going to have a female interference for the bloodline. <laughs> Why would I say that? Because let me tell you something the bloodline is very popular. We got a little bit of dissension because of Jay. We still got Demi. We still got Solo and stuff. And I really felt like for the, for the long time that it is, I said, when they going to get rid of Sami Zayn? Because I hasn't seen it all on Twitter for almost a good year. 
when they're going to get rid of Sami Zayn. I gave them good play how to get rid of them and stuff. But I real to me, Sami only has a 30, 40% chance of winning the undisputed WWE Universal title belt. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He only has that 30, 40% chance of winning. And Roman Reigns has that 80, 90% chance of continuing. I'm sorry. That is that. And then that would, if that gives me the same. Could this be the night that somebody that we all been saying we want to return back to the WWE, return as a heel, but the top B of the bloodline and stuff. So I'm like, I'm saying, we'll have to see where that, where this going to go. But like I said, that is that. But I will come back and I am going to start, I'm going to come back later today and I will talk about the women's division because we got we have a lot we need to talk about, especially how qualification matches are done in the WWE in the double standard in the WWE. And I wanted to come and give y'all some results from uh, two of my polls. So um, I had asked people if they could have um, changed anything about the limit, the U.S. Men's Elimination Chamber and the women's, who would you take out and replace them? So let's get started. So the first question is, WWE fans, if you could replace anybody out of the Women's Elimination Chamber to put in Dana Brooks or Tamina Snuka, who would you pick? Raquel Gonzalez, Liv Morgan, Natty, or Carmella? So Raquel Gonzalez with 0%, meaning they would keep her. Liv Morgan with 25%. Natty with 25%. <coughs> Excuse me. And Carmella with 50%. So it's, it seems like everybody is saying they would take out Carmella with 50% to have Dana Brooks or Tamina Snuka in the match. I think I will agree with that. It's much fair. It, it would have been fair and stuff. And I'm going to give y'all a question of the other day. But then the other question I also asked was, WWE fans, if any of y'all, for for if anybody could replace anybody else in the men's U.S. Elimination Chamber for Ricochet, Shelton Benjamin, or Cedric Alexander, who would it be? You had between Bronston Reed, Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, and South Rollins. So, Johnny Gargano has 0%, meaning they would want to see him in the match. Okay. We have Seth Rollins with 33%. We have Brunston Reed with 33%. And we have Damian Priest with 43%. So, you see right here, these three guys, they are saying these are the three guys they would replace. Do I agree? might to a certain T, but yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it has to be said and you have to consider how WWE has been gone, gone by for the past few weeks. And I'm just going to turn this, this little bit of this other half into a little bit of the wrestling talk and doing with, um, the elimination chamber. We fans don't always see the eye to eye on a lot of things. And then it's it's time for some of us, for some of y'all to open your eyes up to families who are connected to the wrestling industry. Like, hmm, mine. And, and when somebody like, hmm, tells you on Twitter, I know more than you think. 
Y'all can't just always just write thinking what you always know, like be right, and they might know a little more. So when you have somebody who is connected to the industry, who's trying to tell you, hey, I know how everything works. And when somebody tells you, oh, I had a family member that worked at a big box company and worked overseas. And they worked behind the scenes, turning your favorite superstars into household names. You might want to sit back and listen. And to get me to say, when it comes to how WWE go by of giving women opportunities, I know, and just from this certain somebody of our family, I know that they, one, have said, you have wrestling politics, you do have favoritism in there, and you have people who's been handed because, like, what's the main thing I've been seeing the last few months? Um, double standard in the women's division. And I do see a double standard. Was it a double standard to give Carmella, no offense to any of y'all Carmella fans, um, was it okay to give Carmella, let me not say give, but hand Carmella a qualifying opportunity out of the gate of her return? Y'all need to think about it. And I will be coming back and talking about this because how can you not consider um, Tamina Snuka or Dana Brooks for this match, for these matches where one, Dana Brooks for the past two years, for almost two years, was the in was the 24-7 champion. She should be the main person part of that match, especially as part of that women's elimination chamber match. So y'all, the question of the day, do WWE needs to have a new protocol about how they let women qualify for matches or are you okay of how they went by this qualifying match to consider the women for these women for the elimination chamber? That's all I have time for. Don't forget to thumbs up this video, comment below, and subscribe to my channel. Bye.